Hello there, welcome to Explain Apologetics. This week we examine the question of why did God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden? After all, didn't God know that man would fall because of it and thereby bringing about the evil and the calamity and sins that we have in our world today? Short response to that question is that God did so because he intended to do so. That's as simple as it gets. Now, let me break that down to say there are just two main ways in which you can respond to this question. The first of which would be to say uh, that it was due to human free will, that somehow God found it necessary to respect human free will and to basically put that to give man a choice whether he would follow God or not. Now, for a number of reasons, I don't think that is the biblical uh, teaching on the matter of evil because we have seen time and time again of how God could intervene and stop certain evil actions from happening. Say, for example, in the case of Abraham, who was about to kill his son Isaac, God clearly intervened through his angel, the angel of Yahweh coming through and basically saying to Abraham, do not lay a hand on the boy. Why didn't God then do that for the fall? I mean, it seemed as if God was perfectly silent when the fall was taking place. So this leads me to a more complex explanation, one that I believe is more biblical, and that is the greater good defense. In other words, God foreknew the sin of Adam and Eve, not in a passive sense whereby he did it and then later saw what was going to happen. Rather, God put the tree of knowledge and good and evil there because he decreed every event that comes about and that includes the fall of Adam and Eve. So to put this into perspective, God creates the tree of knowledge of good and evil, places it in the middle of the garden where Adam and Eve were, knowing full well that they were going to be tempted by the serpent which he created. Now this is again an important point because Adam and Eve, it seems, may not necessarily have sinned in the absence of the serpent, but the serpent there certainly was a contributing factor. And God is the one that creates the serpent, unless, of course, you believe that the serpent was an uncreated being. That wouldn't make sense at all. So God creates the serpent, knowing full well what's going to happen, allows the serpent to be in the Garden of Eden, watches this entire thing play without actually stopping and intervening, and then basically comes about and promises in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 that he would create enmity between the seed of the woman and the serpent, which would ultimately lead to the seed of the woman crushing the head of the serpent after being bitten in the heel. In short, I believe that was a prophecy concerning the painful death of Jesus, which would ultimately be the victory over sin. Uh, over the serpent itself. So when you understand that, then it becomes clear to us that perhaps the fall was something that God ordained, as the, the Westminster Confession says, that God ordains everything that happens. And that means that God was in total control of the fall and he decreed it to bring about something through it. And that leads us to the final question. What did God achieve to the fall? And here is where I submit to you that if the fall was plan B, then it necessarily follows that Jesus and his atoning work on the cross would also have to be a plan B. In other words, it seems that the fall of man un unintentionally led to God having to send Jesus to rescue a plan of creation that somehow didn't quite go to plan. Now, that's not what I believe happens. I don't believe that Jesus is ever plan B. Rather, I believe that Jesus was plan A all along. And as the Bible says, the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. Meaning that when God created man, he had the atoning and saving work of Christ in mind. And that would therefore mean that the fall was plan A. And God very much decreed it, not because God is the author of evil. In fact, scripture is clear that God is not the author of evil. Rather, he is the author of life and that eternal life would come to his creatures through the saving work of Jesus Christ. But in order for that to take place, the fall had to be in the picture. Now, I, I don't expect this to be something that is too easy for us to digest. 
But I do, I do think that we find a number of instances in the Bible that would give us reason to believe that this is what the scripture says to us. We have a, a, the biblical testimony of a God that is in complete control over all things that happen. In fact, Ephesians 1.11 says that we were predestined in him according to him who works out all things in accordance to the counsel of his will. So that God is in the midst of bringing everything according to the counsel of his will, nothing really is left to chance. And even Jesus, contemplating the evil that was going to befall him, says in Luke 22.22, 22, the Son of Man will go as it has been decreed. The evil that befell Jesus, the whipping, the nailing on the cross, the torment that our Lord went through was decreed by God according to Jesus himself. And you see, that was not to say that God was the author of death for Jesus. No, on the contrary, God is the author of eternal life. He brought about the eternal life through the death of his son. But you see, that entailed decreeing the death as well. So God uses evil to bring about good and that's not quite the same thing as evil men or the devil himself who brings about evil for the end of just bringing about evil god has the ability to use these evil things to achieve his goals his purposes and his intentions and that's why when you and i go through evil in life and we face sufferings we can say what the apostle paul said in romans chapter 5 we rejoice in sufferings because we know we have a god that is in control. And if God had ordained that we go through sufferings, that's a good thing, that we should go through them, boldly trusting that the same God that decreed these sufferings coming upon us would also decree a way for us to triumph over them through the promises that we receive in Jesus Christ and his atoning work on the cross. I hope this gives you a more complete picture of the fall and to realize the fall was not simply an oops in the, God, in the plan of God, rather something very much planned because God intended to bring about eternal life through Jesus Christ. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have more questions on issues like this, we strongly encourage you to write to us at Explain Apologetics. You could visit our Facebook page, Explain Apologetics, or simply write to our email, explainapologetics at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing to you. Till then, bye for now.